Hello everyone, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Hu Guo Da Wang. On September 11th, 2001, nearly 3,000 people died in an attack on America. A series of hijacked planes struck the twin World Trade Center towers in New York and the Pentagon. One plane went down in a field in Pennsylvania. There were no survivors from any of the planes, and the remaining deaths happened when the twin towers collapsed one after the other. In one single day, the United States was changed, as well as the dynamic between the U.S. and the Middle East. And now, 20 years after those attacks, it's time to change that dynamic again. When I was just a boy, I went up one of the Twin Towers as a tourist. I had a family in New York, and the towers were a regular visit for sightseers. Embarrassingly, what I remember most is the elevator and the look of the building from the ground outside. At the time, America was already at war with various regions, including the Middle East. We invaded Panama as an extension of the endless War on Drugs. The war was condemned as a violation of international law, and we invaded the Persian Gulf in another controversial war. On the ground level in America, this war was viewed as a strategy to gain oil control. In the 1980s, America started or was involved in three wars. In the 1990s, America started or was involved in seven wars. But in 2001, those Twin Towers in New York were brought down and America was to be at war again. Another endless war was started. The blanket term, War on Terror. First, we invaded Afghanistan, a country in which 92% of men had no idea what 9-11 even was. They didn't recognize pictures, often not even knowing that those pictures were taken in America. But America wasn't at war with the Afghan people. We don't hate the Afghans, just their government, they told us. It's not the Afghans themselves that are the problem, but the government and their political party. In the end, as always, it's the people who actually suffer these wars, not the military and not the government. This we don't hate the people, just the government mentality is how warmongers bring the fighting to those people that they care so much about. There are many strange events surrounding 9-11. On September 10th, Pentagon officials reportedly canceled their 9-11 travel itineraries out of security concerns. That's one of many examples. And this has brought some people to doubt the facts presented about those events. But for our purposes today, we don't need to care what actually happened that day. What's much, much more important is the effects of the events, whatever they were. This is a rabbit hole people often get stuck in. You see, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, in which the United States pretended to be attacked by Vietnam to use as a pretext to invade the country, should not be the focus of the American-Vietnam War. If we want to blame and punish those people involved, which has never happened by the way, then that's one thing. But the tragedy of the American Vietnam War was not the start of the war, it was the war itself. And here we have a similar situation. It's understandable to focus on the motives and theories surrounding 9-11. We can look at companies betting against the airlines used in the hijackings just before 9-11. We can do all these things, and it's late night binge candy, but it really misses the point. The deaths and the ongoing deaths are the point. We've been at war now for 20 years straight. The Watson Institute of International and Public Affairs at Brown University says 913,000 people have died in this war, nearly all of them Muslim. This doesn't include related deaths such as dying from starvation or lack of medical treatment. Over 40% of the dead were civilians, which is, by the way, the largest group. The events on 9-11 were an absolutely horrific display of hateful, ideologically driven mass murder. But when we stack them up next to the ongoing deaths of Muslims, I'm forced to ask a serious question. One of our lives is worth how many Muslim lives exactly? Even though many people who died on 9-11 were not civilians, let's count them as such, and let's round it up. So we say 3,000 civilians died September 11th, 2001. How many men, women, and children who are non-combatant Muslims is that worth to us? Are we talking about a one-to-one -one ratio? So far, the ratio of deaths is 125 to 1. That means that for every American who died on 9-11, 125 people have died in this war. Forget about the trillions of dollars spent. Forget about the creation of new terrorists from our war crimes. Forget about us bombing weddings and schools. Don't get distracted. I just want a clear answer to this question. How many more Muslims do you think we should kill? 
because I'm done with this war. I'm done with carrying the guilt of my own country being the worldwide killer, justified or not. Justification is not the same thing as righteousness. And if it ever was a righteous cause, certainly that time is over for us. Let's work together towards a world in which countries don't cross border lines in violent acts. And if it needs to be done with international support, it needs to have clear, concise, achievable goals. It needs to be abandoned when it fails, and it needs to be done as humanely as possible. These haven't been the case for the longest American war ever, the war on terror, but it could be the case for future wars. That's the dream for now. To all the victims and families of 9-11, I wish you only the brightest futures. And to all the victims and families of the war on terror on all sides, I hope we can end the suffering soon. Leaving Afghanistan was a good, though sloppy, first step towards that. Let's hope for some more steps soon. And if you are a supporter of the ongoing Muslim genocide, please leave a comment letting me know how many Muslim lives you believe an American life is worth. Please also leave your rationale for the sense of supremacy because I'm having trouble following this logic beyond more than 125 to 1. Until next time, thanks everybody. See you soon.